In heart surgery, you are taught to operate on people's hearts without sleep. And you're taught that for a very specific reason. Uh, first off, there's only a certain number of people who do heart surgery, so the ones that do it have to do a lot of it, which means you have to stay up for long hours to do the cases. But in addition, when you have complications, it's usually the middle of the night. So you have to be able to make rote decisions, life-changing decisions, without that much sleep. So we were pushed always to be able to operate on one or two hours of sleep. So I learned a lot about how sleep deprivation affected me. <laughs> And I can tell you for everybody out there who says, oh, you know what, I, I can get along with four and a half, five, six hours, seven hours of sleep. 5% of us genetically have an ability to, to, to go with less than six hours sleep and not pay a significant price for that. Everybody else, the mere mortals in the room, myself included, must get around seven and a half hours of sleep. In addition, lack of sleep is associated very clearly with high blood pressure. We believe it's correlated with, with cancer autoimmune problems. In fact, the best treatment for a flu beyond any other therapy I could offer you is to be able to sleep uh, because it allows your immune system to battle off viruses. And finally, it's correlated with increased death. And we know this from shift workers. People who work shift uh, uh, jobs who are unable to get into a circadian rhythm of normal sleep have a higher mortality rate, independent of all the other factors. So we know it's important. So then what do you do about it? You know, there's three basic reasons we don't sleep. We don't sleep because uh, we have an uh, a inadequate sleep hygiene routine. Second biggest medical issues. We underestimate the importance of uh, you know, a post-nasal drip or allergy or uh, a problem with uh, a pain syndrome, uh, a headache, uh, a restless leg syndrome, and people don't pay attention. Third reason we don't sleep is because we don't think it's important, which is why this conversation is so valuable. And when you appreciate how critical it is to, your, to, the, to be, not just being able to function the next day, but to create. Well, what is creativity? It's connecting dots that seem disparate, that, that naturally wouldn't be put together. To see things where others may not. It's the artist's mind, even if we're you know, an analytic person, is still there. So we lose that when we don't sleep. And so if you put value into that, we start to deal with two elements of that. One, we set our alarm clocks not for when we wake up, but for when we wake, you know, go to sleep. Because if you know you need seven and a half hours sleep, you have to go to bed seven and a half hours before you wake up or you won't get the numbers you need. Uh, but also you have to deal with the stress in life that will often force you to awaken in the middle of the night. You know, and people can divide themselves to those who can't get to sleep and those who wake up prematurely. But often that's driven by your brain processing troubling things in your life. And because you haven't coped with it in your awakened life, you're faced to force those realities in your sleep. With cell phones, it's beyond that. The cell phone frequencies will bother your brain's ability to go into deep sleep, restorative sleep. That's the sleep you need to, to feel recharged. So you have to move your phone to at least five feet away from your bed in order to get rid of those. And you know, if you don't get the deep restorative sleep, that's your main source of growth hormone. And growth hormone is our vitality hormone. People get it injected into them, but you don't need to. You can naturally make more growth hormone if you're able to get to sleep.